Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here in Northern Virginia where we're covering the Surface Navy Association's 30th Annual Conference and Trade Show. Our coverage here is sponsored by Leonardo DRS. And we're here with John Kaufman, who is a retired United States Navy uh, captain, uh, surface uh, warfare uh, officer here at the SNA show, uh, and also is the vice president uh, for naval systems at Saab uh, North America. John, thanks very much for the time, and uh, it's always uh, great to have you put your best foot forward for us. Okay, it's good to see you again, and welcome to SNA 2018. John, talk to us a little bit about the uh, the, the new uh, underwater target. Uh, you guys got uh, a big contract on that. Talk to us about the program. Absolutely, that's the AEV-62. It's an underwater acoustic target uh, housed in an autonomous underwater vehicle. So the Navy is going about actually acquiring this program in a very, very novel way. Talk to us a little bit about the demonstration cycle you guys are going to go, go through you know, in that um, entire process. Absolutely, the Navy is interested. They're going to operate this vehicle for 90 days down in the Autec range in Andros Island in the Bahamas to uh, basically run it through its paces, see if it can do what the U.S. Navy needs it to do. Uh, they've already sent four operators over to Sweden to be trained on how to operate it. There are obviously security concerns because um, underwater acoustics is a very highly guarded, you know, kind of uh, government information. So they're very careful about that. So the U.S. government and the U.S. Navy are going to operate it themselves. We'll have a Saab representative there to make sure they can assist if required. But the U.S. Navy went to Sweden and was trained for five days on how to operate the vehicle. And, and what was the competitive edge you think that you guys had on this? What the Navy was looking for, their current target, the Mark 30 Mod 1 target, is kind of reached an obsolescence issue. And the replacement program, the Mark 30 Mod 2, was canceled due to cost overruns and time delays. So the U.S. Navy's in kind of an awkward position right now. They need a very effective underwater ASW target to train with. And Saab has the AUV-62 AT on the shelf that can do what the U.S. Navy needs. Uh, we're here standing in front of this big yellow vehicle, and this is uh, cleverly named the Mummins. Which I was going to say, that's an awesome, uh, awesome nickname. Yeah, I'll explain. Multi-shot mine neutralization system. So it is really the next generation of unmanned uh, neutralization capability. It's designed to be launched from an unmanned surface vessel, which in itself was launched from an MCM ship. So we're now three levels removed from the MCM and where the people are and the mine danger area. Um, yeah, I mean, I was going to say that this is kind of an, an extraordinary um, autonomy uh, trifecta, if, if you will. But first, let's talk a little bit about the vehicle because this is a joint Franco, an Anglo-French program, isn't it? To develop right. a capability for uh, the, the French and the Royal Navy, but then also you're interested in bringing it to the attention of, of the United States. Talk to us a little bit about the Anglo-French program and then talk to us about how this could have application here in the U.S. market. Absolutely. Yeah, they just completed the first year, which was a technical design review for the vehicle with the joint French-UK program, and we are now two months into the build phase of that program. The U.S. Navy is watching this closely because they are really interested for LCS and other applications where you're able to launch an unmanned underwater vehicle from an unmanned surface vehicle. And if you know anything about the LCS mission package, that's exactly where that mission package concept is coming from. You know, both unmanned surface vehicles and unmanned underwater vehicles. What um, differentiates you, do you think, in the marketplace in terms of the, the capability you guys are bringing to bear? Absolutely. This vehicle, it's in the multi-shot part of the mine neutralization in that acronym. This vehicle can place three neutralization charges on different mines and then come back, reload more neutralization devices, and tag those on the mines as well. This is a reusable vehicle that can attach the neutralization devices. Some of the other concepts that are being employed now, the neutralization charge and the vehicle are one and the same. So when you launch it, it's going to destroy a mine, it's also going to destroy the vehicle, and it's not coming back. So it's a one-way trip, and if it turns out to not be a mine, it was a mine-like object that turned out to be, let's say, a rock, you've lost a vehicle uh, that's a lot more expensive than just a charge. So well, that's the fundamental difference. And, and talk to us about the challenge of positive identification, right? Because this is doing it with a degree of autonomy. What's, talk to us about the challenge in ensuring, you know, mines are sometimes buried, they're not easy to see, they're, you know, it is mistaken for a rock. Talk to us about some of the, the systems and the capabilities that you guys are using to make that positive identification 
uh, at the end of the day, so you're not right. you know, A, blowing up the wrong thing or? Two things, we have a sonar built into this vehicle for initial uh, re-detection of something that's been previously located and also a camera system. So the data from the camera and from the sonar are going to be fed back through the ROV, which comes out back here, going back to the unmanned surface vessel that's got a relay back to the MCM ship. So they'll see the picture that this vehicle shows on the camera and the sonar to positively identify. Uh, that's, uh, that's, actually, that's, that's actually really clever. Um, how much, uh, you know, Saab, I think, uh, a lot of people, you know, equated obviously with the Gripen and the Jet and radar systems, whole variety of, of systems. But it's also, you know, as a, as a making back in the submarine, but you know, is in the submarine business now with the A twenty six submarine, yes. um, which is uh, which is under construction. But it's also a leading maker of unmanned underwater systems. How much of that commercial experience, commercial approaches, are resident in this vehicle, whether it comes to durability or usability and functionality? Yeah, we're totally, you know, on, on a broader theme, I'll just say Saab and a lot of other people are realizing that it's really artificial to declare a vehicle either commercial or military. We're seeing a lot of crossover in the technology. In fact, in some ways, the commercial ROVs and AUVs that you see today are somewhere out in front of the Defense Department, which is kind of a twist on the normal case where DOD leads and then commercial industry comes in behind and follows. We're seeing some direction flow in the opposite direction. So it's really, you know, to say a vehicle is military and not commercial, there are commercial aspects that are integrated into this vehicle and vice versa. So we're really seeing that being a permeable membrane to go back and forth between commercial and military uses for these vehicles. And, and John, um, you injured your leg in a, in a great tennis match, a yes. biblical tennis match. Yeah, you right. got the point. How, how good, was, the, was that worth it? Was the injury worth that, worth that win? The win was good, but I'm, I'm not sure it was a even trade. <laughs> That's all I can say. You know, I've got a long recovery road in front of me, so. Um, uh, but I'm doing my best. Uh, you're doing your best, and you're, you're pulling in, putting in a full day's work here at SNA. Yes. Sir, thanks very much. Always a treat talking to you. Good to see you, thanks.